don't plan things properly and you end up having property because somebody passed away, now what do you do with it? How do we find these properties? How can we use these properties to come in and do some wholesaling or fixing up or whatever? So I want you to... Uh, I want you to just kind of think about how we can deal with that. Jim uh, will give you a great uh, rundown on this. So let's give Jim a great hand here. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple of questions. First of all, we're here to have fun. Yeah. Not fun yes. last time. <laughs> okay. So, secondly, must have a couple of people out right now. Yeah, he'll be back. Um, and remember, we're, just, we're on the internet. So you're, you're talking to a larger audience even though this is small here. Because we're videoing the whole thing. Oh, okay. Uh, it's the same lecture regardless. Yeah. <laughs> I shoot from the hip, so it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I, well, I always start out with two questions. And I think I needed them for an answer. Um, how, many of, how many of you are baby boomers? Born between 1946 and 64. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's surprising. Okay. Uh, how many uh, millennials? Right now, millennials are basically 18, 19 to 33, 34. Okay. And I think they are too. Well, good. Congratulations. Oh, and congratulations to you, millennials. As of July. You became the plurality. For the first time in our life, us boomers are not the majority. We're, really? no, we're number two. No. Over, <laughs> over seven million of us have died. Yeah, oh. Oh. A lot more, but that's <laughs> anyway. So congratulations to the millennials. Usually uh, when I lecture, usually if there's a hundred people, there's not five millennials, there's five of you here. So congratulations on yeah, yeah. Wanting to be capitalist. <laughs> I thought everybody went to college now was a socialist, so maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, I shoot from the hips. <laughs> you got one in the audience. We won't get into that. Uh, let's see what else we want to talk about before we start. Oh, um, yeah, why not? Um, I'm not some Yankee infiltrator. <laughs> Every property you're going to see is right here in Southern California. Lived in Santa Monica for 17, Redondo for 8, Newport for 9, San Clemente for 8. I'm an active real estate broker, have been for over 35 years in the state of California. I've never had a complaint filed against me. <laughs> also, also, for those of you who are familiar with Guthy Ranker, and I look like many of you are not, uh, Cindy, Cindy Crawford and Tony Robbins were protégés and are endorsed by Guthy Ranker. They're a billion and a half a year sales company, and I'm the only real estate person they ever endorsed or sponsored. My stuff works. I've been around for 30 years. If it didn't, it wouldn't work. I've given a lot of lectures over the last 35 years, and Mine's a little bit different. Well, mine's different in a number of ways. But one of them is, I'm not here to show you to how to buy properties. If you want to buy properties, pick up the phone and call a real estate agent. They have access to the MLS. They'll sell you properties. The object in real estate is to make money. We're not here to buy properties. I don't want to be a property manager. Completely different concept. I'm here to talk about probate. I created the probate system. We'll get into that later. I've done it for over 35 years. I'll get into other bits and parts of it. So what is probate? First of all, we have a couple of strange terms in real estate. One's probate and one's foreclosure. And as most of you already know, foreclosure is simply when someone cannot make their loan payments, so the lender takes back the property because that's what was used as a security device to initiate the loan to begin with. Probate is simply when someone passes away. The assets that are left have to be distributed. Hence, they have to be probated. It's no more complicated than that. Probate hasn't changed in 2,000 years. So 
always been a handful of problems, and the solution to those, same, those problems are the same as they have been for centuries. So every once in a while I get a question, what's new under probate? Nothing. People die, they have assets, they need to be distributed. I mean, I don't even understand the question. All right. Something that nobody has ever said to you before. Every one of my testimonials and my product is approved by the Federal Trade Commission. Like I said, squeaky clean. Foreclosures, auctions, short sales, everybody is chasing after the same property. With Jim's system, are able to find unlisted property. There's no sign out front. Real estate agents don't know about it. It's not on the internet, it's not on the paper, it's not on anything, any list you can buy. Jim's system told me what to look for, and when I was at the courthouse, I found it. On my first deal, I made $116,000. It's just simply, just follow the steps, don't question it, just do it, and you'll see a result. I bring him, him up for about three reasons. One is it's believed that if somebody goes to law school, they're an expert on the law. The law is just as specialized as medicine. Your kid falls out of a tree and breaks their arm. Do you take them to an emergency or do you take them to your next door neighbor who's a brain surgeon? You take them to an emergency. The law is just as specialized as medicine is. In today's world, 60% of the people who graduate from law school never go into the legal profession. Virtually nobody specializes in probate. They do tax, criminal, personal injury, where the real money is, and corporate law. One of the reasons I brought this up is that Rocco called me at 10 o'clock one morning. He says, Jim, I got a real problem. The attorney's going to do something they don't need to do. They're not trying to kill the deal. It's not the old deal where the attorney's trying to kill the deal. Just had, didn't, it wasn't their area of specialty. They were going to do something that was going to kill the deal. We had five hours to fix that. Long story short, we did. They didn't do what they didn't have to do to begin with, so Rocco made $16,000 on his first deal. It was also here in California, out in San Bernardino County. Probate, if done correctly, is secret real estate. <laughs> if you do probate correctly, it is secret real estate. The address is not in print. If it's not in print, how is somebody going to find out about it and compete with you on it? They're not. And that's what makes probate unquestionably the best way to buy, make money in real estate, bar none, except for developing we'll get into, and building. We'll get into that a little later. Exposure has always been the enemy of the investor. If it's exposed, the guy sitting next to you, he knows how to read. The guy sitting next to you knows how, how to read. They know how to read and they want to make money. They have access to it. Competition is great. You like competition? Surf. Play sports. You want to make money? Find a monopoly position. And probate's it. Unexposed assets if you do it correctly. I think we went to no sound. The system works, and it works for us because we've been in real estate now for seven years and we've no real estate background. So if it was not successful, we would be back to our corporate jobs. One of a couple, a couple out of two some. How would you like to have a million dollars? Okay. I knew you guys were rich. I didn't realize you were that rich. <laughs> hey, I lived in the beach here for 41 years in Southern California. I know you got money. But... All right. the, reason I, the reason I bring up the question is because I'm talking about it from, in, from being age-related. Your 20s, 30s, 40s, even your 50s, you think a million dollars makes you rich. And I'm not going to address that issue. No, but if you're 60, 70, 
its income stream. What will this money bring in on a yearly basis? Before the crash, most investors were getting a 10% return on investment. Today, it's a lot, most of them are getting under five. So they went from $100,000 a year to $50,000 a year. And one thing that makes the rich different than everybody else, they never touch principal. So they lowered their standard of living from 100 to 50. And the reason I bring it up is you millennials will eventually be our age. And you're gonna, when you get our age, you're looking at income stream. A million dollars creates 100,000 or 50,000. That's the reason I brought it up. Apparently not funny, but here we go. <laughs> okay. According to Ben Stein, only 5 to 7% five to of Americans are going to die in the same lifestyle they had before they died. Not very many. In 05, 35% of Americans had 35% retired for, uh, the average was $35,000 for retirement. Today, it's actually under 8,000. How long are you going to retire, especially here in Southern California, on $8,000? Two and a half months? Yeah. Maybe. If you live at the beach in a tent, then he'll let you use his property. <laughs> no, he'll charge you for it. Now's the time to start making money. I mean, you've got to start sitting aside for retirement. Said this over 30 years ago, I know for, for you guys in Santa Barbara this is pennies, but I said over 30 years ago, anybody, anybody anywhere, Indiana, Idaho, San Fernando Valley, San Bernardino, can make twenty to thirty thousand dollars a deal in probate and can do at least one a quarter. Quarter, it's not a limit. It's just an example of what anybody can reasonably do. That's an earnings of eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. And that twenty and thirty thousand was a lot more than it is today. Warren Buffett said. The wealthy make, make, or they create wealth in spurts, and we're all fortunate here. We're all in real estate, and that's what we do. If you had a nine-to-five job and you get a thousand-dollar a month raise, what actually transpires? Half of it goes to federal and state income tax. The other five hundred, you raise your standard of living. At the end of the year, you're not one penny better off than you were when you started. We make money in bulk. And we're very fortunate that, by doing that. So we don't spend all the money we make when a check comes in from a property. This is a reminder. I know every one of you knows the answer to this. There are over 10,000 vocations in the United States. One vocation has created 70% of the millionaires before the crash, during the crash, and after the crash. And what is that? Real estate. Real estate. There is not one Fortune 500 company that gets a 20% return on investment. Number one is banking at 19.6. We do a whole lot better in probate than that. Lever example of leverage. We buy a million dollar property, you lay down $100,000. Property appreciates, thanks to God, 101%. So you've actually doubled your money. You laid down $100,000 and now you have a $100,000 profit. 100% return on investment. We'll come back to that later. That's the reason I brought it up. How would you like to buy a property, not once in a while, but even consistently, 40% below fair market value? I'm serious. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I got no business being here. Yeah, yeah. I can beat the traffic. Let's do it. That's what we want. How can we do that? I tell you how you're not going to do it. <laughs> Using traditional methods, real estate brokers. It goes in the multiple listing book. Every broker knows how to read, shares it with their client. Foreclosures. You can go to the internet and get a list of foreclosures. Everybody knows how to read your competitor. REO, my favorite one. REOs. These were foreclosures the foreclosure guys didn't want. Exactly. So the bank is taking them back. You can call the bank directly and go to the internet to get the list of those. You don't get auctions much anymore since the crash, but if you remember before the crash, They'd be in an auditorium, they'd have anywhere from 2,500 to 5,000 people bidding on 125 properties. Not one of those was sold below 110% of its fair market value. 
When you buy something that much, you are praying for inflation because you're sure not an investor. Tax sales. Again, county recorder, county assessor office. You can get the book and go to the internet. Every one of these, if you know people, if you ever, anybody ever met anybody who couldn't read? Well, yeah. Yeah, well, they're not your competitor. <laughs> <laughs> these people are. <laughs> I've done foreclosures in the past. I've done no money down in the past. And what I can tell you is you give me foreclosure and probate to pick between or anything else in probate, and I'm going to pick probate. I don't care to do foreclosures. Uh, usually, uh, if you're going to do that, uh, you, you have to go to the, the courthouse, stand there with 85 other people, uh, and try and buy this property, and you have to have cash in hand. I have done some foreclosures. I mean, I bought REOs. I've bought them before the auction. I bought them at the auction. Um, there's always a lot of competition. Um, people get very ruthless about it. Jim system is a system, that, and the only one that I know of out there that gives you an opportunity to see a property before anybody else even knows that it's on the horizon uh, for the opportunity. The probate market has not even been tapped into like the foreclosure. Everybody is foreclosures, foreclosures, foreclosures. Um, people are intimidated by probate because they don't know about probate and they don't know how simple it is to obtain probate property. You have very little competition because they're not easy to find unless you have a technique that shows you how to find them. His technique shows you that. And, and again, I hate to be redundant here, but you, you get out there and as often as not, you have no competition. The system works no matter what area, what market, there will always be property turnover. There will always be an opportunity for you using the Jim Bank system. Every probate has personal property. Nobody owns a house with no furniture, no clothes, and runs around the property naked, and that's all they own is the house. I'm not going there. <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. I'll point the jokes out as we go along here. <laughs> Every property has personal property. It's been my experience over 35 years of investing in probate that about 85% have at least one piece of real estate. There are over 7 million probates with over $6 trillion of value. Can you say wow? Wow! Hey! Wow! Wow, congratulations. In a bucket that never empties, and I'll cover that again later on. Last year, two and a half million Americans died. I, didn't ha I had nothing to do with the death of any of them. Again, not funny. All right, uh, today's world, and this is, this is going up here, there are 14 times more probates and foreclosures. Why in the hell would you bother with a foreclosure? You just like competition? Dumbfounds me. Once a probate, always a probate. See, there's no cure for death. See, once they die, it's... <laughs> there's no Lazarus syndrome. There is no redemption period on a probate, and there isn't a foreclosure. There's 24 mortgage states, 26 trustee states, but some many trustee states also have, and they certainly all allow there to be a judicial foreclosure. When there's a judicial foreclosure, there's a redemption period of 12 months. So you buy my foreclosed property, I come back 364 days later and I say, thank you for fixing up my property, I really appreciate it, and there's nothing you can do about it. That baby's mine again. That doesn't happen in probate. When we close, you own the property. Period. Probate works. The numbers are phenomenal. As stated earlier, probate is the same all over the world, and of course it is. It always has been. It can't. It has no choice.
move sound. Yeah. Somewhere up, somewhere down. This gives you a chance to catch your breath from all the laughing at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> In the town of Defiance, Ohio, near Toledo tonight, they are talking about what just might be the holy grail of baseball card discoveries of all time. Carl Kistner was cleaning out the attic of his aunt's house. She died in October. He found a cardboard box that had belonged to his grandfather. Inside, hundreds of perfectly preserved baseball cards from around 1910, including Ty Cobb, Cy Young, and yes, Honus Wagner. Experts have confirmed all the cards are real and could fetch up to three million dollars at auction. Could have been you. This was a probate deal. All right, quite a story here. A man in Carson City who died with just 200 bucks in his bank account <laughs> passed away, it turns out, in his own private version of Fort Knox. Months after Walter Samasco Jr. died, Cruz made a stunning discovery inside his home. Boxes full of gold bars and coins stashed all over the place. Brooke Boone has more. This photo on his driver's license is the only picture we could find of 69-year-old Samasco Jr. He died in his home in June from heart problems, but his body wasn't found until about a month later. Joe Baxter was the neighbor who called authorities. He'd come out in the yard and wave once in a while, but that's as sociable as he got. When the house was put up for sale, the realtor, who was a friend of Baxter's, asked if he wanted to come over and take a look at some of Samasco's belongings. But what he uncovered was beyond expectation. Because we thought it was ammunition. Opened it up and it was rolls of $20 gold pieces. So I've never seen how much gold in my life or coins that old. The realtor immediately called Carson City clerk and recorder Alan Glover. So you need to come over to the house right away. Glover says in weight alone, the gold is worth at least $7 million. The amount of it was what was overwhelming. They had to use a wheelbarrow to move boxes and boxes of gold from the house. It's now being kept in a secure location. And gold was not the only thing left behind. Glover says Samasco had $200 in the bank, stock accounts worth $165,000, and $12,000 in cash at the house. And... He was a hoarder. He had cases of salmon, cases of tuna fish. Glover says he had cases of ammo, guns, and conspiracy theory books as well. It appears that he did not like government very much. But despite all his assets, Samasco did not have a will. Close relative is a first cousin in San Rafael, California. According to Glover, after the IRS takes their share, the rest should be hers. Told you. Uh, that's Brooke Boone, re Brooke Boone reporting for us. That expert up there says it's not just the sheer weight that some of those gold coins they found date back to the 1840s. So historical significance here. They were minted in Europe, Africa, and Mexico. Another half million dollars just from the gold coins alone. Uh, single guy, 28 years old, San Rafael. She got all of it. I wanted to say something earlier. I uh, was mentioned uh, when I first got here. Uh, especially with since there's more, usually, quite a few millennials here. How many of you, with the exception of you, how many of you know that Google is misspelled? Only you. Oh, only you now. Okay. Well, I was a math major as an undergraduate, and I barely had 45 semester hours of math. Anyway, Google is one with 100 zeros behind it, and that's where they got the name. The largest number is called a Google Plex. It's a Google to the tenth power. Infinity is just a concept. Google is spelled G-O-O-G-O-L. So the geniuses that copyrighted it spelled it wrong. <laughs> just interesting fact. I just want you to know I'm not just a pretty face. <laughs> uh, probate deal. The Ming Dynasty was creating a pearl that was in the shape of a football, weighed 14 pounds. They ended up giving it 
to the uh, dudes who helped colonize and make them civilize or whatever the hell he did. Anyway, he dies and Hoffman buys it for $200,000. Well, they thought they were going to sell it for 42 million. They did not sell it for 42 million. They only sold it for 25 million. A 1,250% return on investment. Another probate deal. Okay, uh, this is what it looked like. They started out with little, little oysters and got big ones. I'll keep going. Uh, remember the movie American Graffiti? Suzanne Summer drove this car, 57 T-Bird. I bought this out of probate, paid $7,500 for it, turned down $30,000 two weeks later on national television, would then and do, do now. I still have a house in San Clemente, so if you ever down, pull me over and buy a drink. Uh, remember Cheers and Happy Days. Both of them had the Wurlitzer. It's called the Bubble Machine. We're making it in 1946. The TV show Revenge now, if you look real closely, every once in a while it's in the background. Uh, hope for our millennials. It plays a big piece of wax. It's called a 78. <laughs> Wait, I got a trick question. This is for the boomers. It's a trick question. How many grooves are in that 78? Just one. 78? 78? Just one. Just one. Yeah. See, the needle goes and the thing turns around so that there's only one. I told you. you uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> paid five grand for it. They were worth fifty thousand the day I bought them. Again, many more times personal property than real property in probate. So don't disregard the personal property. You go into an antique store. Without exception, everything came out of probate. In order to be an antique, it has to be a hundred years old. So they're not making many new antiques. Uh, jewelry, cars, <laughs> antiques, stocks, bonds, coins, planes, trains, everything. Teacups. Who ever thought people would collect teacups? When I first started, there was no internet, there was no eBay. So we took all this stuff and just threw it in the dumpster because we were real estate people. All we cared about was the house, and they did too. They just wanted to get rid of it. So did we. But for those of you, your children can work it through eBay. Now, you've, you've seen... Storage Wars, Antique Roadshow, Pawn Stars, American Pickers. Often those, some of those items, many of them are probates. Want to run a, for those of you who have never seen Storage Wars, congratulations. But the way it works, if somebody can't make the storage payment, so the guy forecloses on it, then he cuts the lock off, slides up the door, and there's about 20 people there, and they look in, and they, they can't touch it. They can't go in, but they can look at it. Now, our generation, we called that a Cracker Jack box. Because we always hope that we got a big prize in the Cracker Jack. That's a kind of a dessert. <laughs>